Good morning and other tidbits at Great Bay Community College. It's very exciting. Yeah. So I'm going to walk you through, um, because all you have is a very short topic, it's part of the broader recruitment um, conversation. I'm going to walk you through from recruitment to onboarding. And you can ask me questions as we go, because sometimes you just need clarification about certain things that we do. Um, or you can wait until the end. That's all fine. So whichever you prefer. And I think I go like this. So um, onboarding does start at recruitment. And um, some of you who have hired here already have seen Clear Company, the um, online applicant tracking system. We post our positions on Clear Company. We accept applications on Clear Company. We certify candidates. We pass them around to hiring managers and, and um, uh, interview committees. Um, we get them downloaded from Indeed, Glassdoor, um, Monster.com, Zip Recruiter, and something called LinkUp that I've never heard of before. So that's where our recruitment goes. It goes internal for a week if it's a covered position, and then externally it goes to CCSNH plus all of those other sites. So I get address applications from Texas. Right. So sometimes they're ready to move here for it. When you're in here and you're looking at your positions as the hiring manager, Indeed, I will give you a little caveat that Indeed.com um, just downloads everything. Usually there's no applications associated with it. And when there's no application associated with a packet in Clear Company, they get an automatically generated email that says, you know, your, your packet's incomplete. Um, we don't we don't look at those candidates because if you can't follow basic directions and fill out um, the rest of the materials, then we really just, that sends up a red flag. Now, if we don't have enough candidates, and maybe Indeed just kind of put that in there for them, um, and they don't know they're supposed to fill out an application, but there's somebody that looks promising and we don't have a really good pool, we might, might go back and uh, reach out to somebody that has an incomplete packet just to say, you know, we want to know more about you, we'd like to consider you, but you need to finish the process. Mm -hmm. And then if they do, we will, and if they don't, then that's fine, we know the answer. So it starts here. The cool thing I want to tell you about Clear Company is, at the system level, the HR level, um, we are going to use Clear Company for, as uh, um, their onboarding product um, in the future, I don't know when, um, but we started this process when Richie Colodarchi was still here, and what will happen is, um, usually when an employee comes in their first day, we spend about 45 minutes to an hour and they fill out paperwork. Um, Clear Company is going to send them the critical pieces of paper that they need to become a new hire. We can um, take videos, um, video messages from the president, from the hiring manager, from anybody that we want to greet them and welcome them. Um, you know, just to get them, that starts the onboarding process. It makes it a little more personal. Um, so stay tuned for that. I'm hoping I'll find out something this Friday about where we are in the process. And is that going to be for all the positions or just covered positions? So that's a really good question. Um, you can I, I can't answer, answer that yet because the recruitment is different for right. those two categories. So I don't know yet. Cool. Okay. Thanks. Stay tuned. All right, so who's involved in the recruitment process? So you have, um, obviously, you have the hiring manager who identifies a need within the department. Um, the need is discussed with the senior leader. So if it's the academic affairs department and a faculty says, I need a full-time faculty, it's going to be discussed with Lisa McCurley. Um, the position gets identified as a vacancy or to be filled, uh, I mean, or a position to be created. It happens at that point. Um, the CFO and the president have to verify the budget to make sure that we actually can afford that position. Then it goes to senior leadership team. Um, the position's vetted through the leadership team. Does the position meet the overall needs of the college or is there another position that should take priority? Do we have the resources now and into the future to support this position? Can the need be met by reallocating current resources? Um, the next step, um, once all those questions are answered, and if it's in the affirmative, it goes on to HR. Um, HR makes recommendations and then creates either the position or opens the vacancy in Clear Company. Then system office is involved. And so if it goes, we're at that point, we have a position creation, Sarah Sawyer is creating the position. And when she's done with that, we post it. If it's a vac vacancy, we sent it to Kathleen Medallia and she posts it that next Thursday, if we get it to her in time. 
Any questions about this? I know I went through that really quickly, but anything that seems unfamiliar or weird? So Tina, I know you're new and you haven't been through, all, I mean, you went through one sort of, sort of yeah, that was an easy one. So um, if you have any questions about your like, clarification. Like, why am I ever afraid to talk, right? I know, that's <laughs> true. What, what am I thinking? <laughs> like I'm giving you permission. <laughs> Oh, good. Okay. So the position, it's posted. Um, we have hiring manager duties. We have search committee responsibilities. Candidates are certified and interviewing commences. So let's talk about that. Um, the position's posted through CCSNH internally on Clear Company for seven days. That's a covered position. Seven days um, internally throughout the CCSNH, you know, because you get the Thursday posting from CCSNH. Um, if it's a, if it's a, uh, confidential position, that's weird. Um, we don't have to post it for seven days internally. We post it simultaneously, internally and externally. Um, sometimes it goes out as a separate email from system office. Sometimes it doesn't go out at all. Um, and it just gets posted. So I don't know how to explain that because I don't know the rationale behind that, but I will tell you that that's a thing. And so sometimes if you're on the CCSNH website and you see a confidential position and you haven't seen it come across your email, um, I can't answer why it happened that way, but sometimes it happens that way. Yes? Can you just help me understand what a confidential position is? Yeah, so um, it's an administrative position. Um, it's a position that is at will. So... Um, like me. Yes, you. like you, like Mine's me. Um, Director of like OTs. HR, yeah, um, AVPs, right? Okay, yeah. so that's yeah. So hiring managers are given full access to applicants on Clear Company. Company, um, HR certifies internal candidates. Hiring managers determine next steps for internal candidates. If internal candidates, um, if they are internal candidates, and the um, hiring manager is interested, they're given first consideration. The only thing I mean by that is um, we want to we want to make sure we, we're not just throwing them like at the end. You know, if they're internal candidates and they're viable candidates, we want to sort of interview them like at the at the front end of things. We want to make sure that they know we're interested in them. If they're internal candidates and there and there aren't many of them, if there's only one, and we really need a good pool, right away we let them know, you know what, you're going to be considered for this position, but we're putting you in. We're opening it up to a, a wider pool of candidates, and, and you'll we'll get back to you. We just keep them in the know. That doesn't mean that if you have an internal candidate, you have to interview them, because sometimes they don't certify. Sometimes they don't mean, by certify, I mean they don't meet the minimum qualifications of the position. If they don't meet the minimum qualifications of the position, I let them know that. I just get in touch with them separately. So, um, and adjuncts are not considered internal. They aren't. They are so not. if adjuncts ever want to they take that, not. Yeah, they're not. No, adjuncts they are not covered. Are now what? What? Um, <laughs> no, like, what? Yeah. They, they are now. Is what I'm saying. They, 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 are. they were not. Uh, I want to say 30 years ago. It was up to the colleges, but as of as of at least when you and I started here, adjuncts became um, considered uh, internal positions. Okay, because there's mixed messages about that. Oh, Thank good. You. I'm going to follow yeah, that. Cool. <laughs> Thank you very much. So stay tuned on that. I'll let you know for sure. Um, uh, <laughs> you guys are both saying different things right here. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, what, what did she no, say? Are as of um, so then the hiring manager invites up, okay. <laughs> the hiring manager invites a cross departmental mix to serve on the search committee. Three to five people on the search committee are recommended. The hiring manager will receive sample interview questions to vet with the search committee. So that's a process. The search committee is really active and should be part of the process of looking at the candidates, um, you know, beforehand. Um, think, helping the hiring manager create the questions to be asked at the interview, um, that should be a really working uh, committee and not just up to the hiring manager. Um, the search committee and the hiring manager will either choose the candidates to interview together or the hiring manager may make that determination from certified candidates themselves. Sometimes hiring managers don't want the search committee, but in an ideal situation, you should all be talking about the same thing. If you have enough faith in people to serve in a search committee and to hire somebody for your department, you should have enough faith in that group of people that you're um, choosing the candidates together. But 
I don't dictate anything, so if the hiring manager really wants to open <coughs> up, it's their employee. I just feel like you, you know, you get what you. So we can take their input, but we don't have to listen to it. You really don't. Okay. It's up to the hiring manager. It's recommended that you do, but mm -hmm. I'll just say that. Um, <laughs> Best practice, there you go. The hiring manager will send to HR the availability of the search committee so interviews may be scheduled and then interviewing commences. Okay, so now we go on to interviews. And um, so, if the service certified candidate pool is low, large, excuse me, a hiring manager may determine that a phone interview would narrow down the pool of candidates. So a lot of people don't know this. When you're hiring for a position, usually a staff position like one of the, um, sort of lower level staff positions, and I don't mean that in a derogatory sense, I just mean one of the lower paying positions, really um, create a lot of interest in the outside external pool. And you may have 40 or 50 people that apply for a position. So as we're narrowing down by the certification process, um, we could end up with 25 people. Are you really gonna sit in a room with your search committee and interview 25 people face to face? So the answer to that is, um, I wouldn't. But, so really you should have, the first interview should be a phone interview. So you can weed them out. You can go through your 25 people, narrow it down to however many, then you do your face to face interview. And if you're still not really sure, do another interview after that. Make the pool smaller, maybe you want different people on that interview team for the last interview. This, you can be creative, you just really want to buy, hire the best person. Can so, I start doing group interviews where I bring them all in? I wouldn't, but you know. <laughs> um, Great Ninja Warrior. <laughs> oh, well, tell them what the job is, they take it or leave it, and then I've got my pool at the end, and then yeah. I can interview them. Isn't that like a dating thing too? Like all the people who are in a room yes, the table 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 table. Table. Are you just saying in the interest of efficiency? Yeah. <laughs> so, I've actually seen group interviews work very well. I know. Yeah. We're not I, there yet. <laughs> <laughs> so you're always going to get sample interview questions from me, whether it's for phone interviews or it's face to face. You're always going to get something you can do with them, use them as your basis for creating new questions, um, or use those questions, whatever you know, whatever you want to do. Um, so we just talked about that. Each set of interviews are done with a rating sheet to easily ascertain the search committee's opinion of each candidate's technical skills and fit, the, fit for the position. Um, you're not only asking questions to ascertain the technical skills of the individual, but you also want, you know, you want to know more about that candidate holistically. So there are usually scenario questions that you're asking in there. Um, I'm not, my words are not coming today, so please forgive me that I'm not like really elaborating on what I'm trying to say, but um, you just really want to get, you'll know in the meeting as you're asking the questions, who has the best fit for your department, the way that it operates. Um, and if anybody wants to throw a word out there, I'll probably grab it because. <laughs> so the next thing that happens is, um, when that process is completed, the hiring managers will call the uh, last two to three supervisors for a reference. Now, we always get a list of references from candidates, and the list of references are the people that like the, the, right. the individuals, right? That tells us absolutely nothing. It's nice to have, good for the packet, but I think you really want to know what this person was like as an employee. So I've had luck calling previous supervisors on the application. Only call them if it says yes, you may call them. If it says you can contact them later, then we need to ask the candidate if later is now and we can contact them. And you want to ask the questions that you want to know about that individual in your office, working behind the desk, working with all of you as a group. You want to ask, I have a list of temp a template of questions, but you want to know what that person's like to work with, how cooperative they are, um, are, they, uh, uh, are they autonomous? I mean, you know, you, there's a whole multitude of things that you need to find out about that person. So um, if, that, if you cannot get a reference from the previous supervisor, then we can talk about who to go to next. Um, when that's completed successfully, the offer is made to the candidate by HR. Start date is agreed upon. CCSNH strongly suggests the first day of the pay period is the start date. We follow that as much as possible. And the other thing we have to keep in mind is um, IT, say, there are a lot of people involved in onboarding, and that's what we're coming to next. IT asks for a two week minimum turnaround time before somebody starts because they have a multitude of things that they have to do to get that person on board. But they can't start until they've filled out the form. So the, the, the disconnect always feels like they yep. come in their first day of employment to fill out the forms and then it's 
two weeks to get. So thank you for asking that or mentioning that because what happens is when the offer is made to the individual and we have a start date and all of that, I email them the IT forms. Okay. So they get a whole packet of five or six forms. I get those back. They go to Tim Dubuque. Tim sends them to Mike McNeil. Mike McNeil does whatever he does with them and the person should have an account before they start. So is there a way to um, edit those forms so that we can do like other external things? So for example, in my department, we have a couple different network drives that they all need access to and there's no where to indicate what they need. Okay. So they start That's and then we point. say, oh, we need to get this drive and yep. oh, they need access to this other email as well and yep. oh, they need to be able to set up printers and like there's a whole other. Yep. And I'm going to show you where that's going to fit in now that you just told me. That. All right, perfect. Okay. Does item an addendum to the access pieces? Is there also a spot on the form that's going to address, for instance, if I need them added to the Great Bay faculty resources and all of those types of things? Canvas things, yeah. Canvas things. So let's go to the next slide and you tell me. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and I can't really see this, so I'm going to come up nice and close. This is the employee onboarding sheet. This sheet um, is ugly when you look at it. I can see by the look on Tina's face. No, I can't see it. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. So it told me, me wait till the next slide and it would show me things and I can't yeah. read it. No, so this is, you don't need to read this. I'm just gonna tell you what's on here and then I'll share this PowerPoint with you. Mm -hmm. So this is the trail that onboarding a new employee follows. The hiring manager gets this checklist and they sign off when the, when the um, items are completed. They create an IT ticket for phone and computer setup. They create a facilities ticket for office lo um, location and cleaning. You cr um, they create a purchasing ticket for business cards, if applicable, and for a magnetic name badge. They determine banner access. Oh, so that is on there. Um, they notify the business office if, if a P card is necessary. They set up an onboarding schedule for new employees, a tour, introduction to faculty and staff, academic or um, department operations overview, introduction to key departments and relevance to position. So all of that lives within the hiring manager's duties when there's a new hire. And you're looking at me funny too. This has been an evolved process. You have not seen this before. Thank you. Um, this has come. I was like, can we fill those up for ourselves now just to see if yeah. we got everything? So, none of, so as in any job that you're in, it takes a while to figure out what's missing and what's not and what we need to add and what we need to enhance. So this has been a year and a half's work in progress and this is where we are and you know everything is subject to altering or editing or enhancing so academic affairs um, adds the person to the hard copy directory and marketing adds the person's name to the website directory IT adds the person to the alarm company enables email adds them to the distribution list acts, activates the ID cards phone and computer access you with me banner coordinator Add ccsnh.edu email and Spaden uh, uh, enters the information into Spaden and Banner. They set staff set status in Space Mountain. They activate um, SIAINST if the person was faculty or an adjunct. They enable the pin and the goat pack. I don't even know how these things are. <laughs> I, you um, got me here. I know right? what you're it's doing all here. good. Yeah. Oh, good. They add banner accounts when applicable, ticket system IT for additions, and then they um, send. Re uh, okay, that's fine. That's something between me and. Um, the banner coordinator. Facilities provides keys to the individuals, sets up the office space, cleans the office space. The business office generates a P card. HR adds them to the HRIS, to Time Saver, to the risk management training site. Um, the employee gets the ADP Time Saver um, information to punch in and out. They set up the onboarding schedule with the hiring manager. They provide IT paperwork to the banner coordinator, add them to the org chart, place an HR update in the current, and email the HR candidate profile. Um, I don't set them up for Cleary training, but I have that in there as HR, and I have to figure out what I'm supposed to do with it. <coughs> um, I set them up for driver safety training, emergency management training, workplace conduct training, and then I send, um, oh, I already, that's redundant. And then um, the next thing that happens, Oh, okay, that was the list. So um, I thought that was to it. So this is a pretty comprehensive list of things that happen. So when the person walks in the door behind the scenes, if everybody does what they're supposed to do on that list, it should be seamless. 
So it says that the manager determines banner access, and then we talked about shared drives and things as well. So um, usually I write them into that form, yeah. but it sounds like you're mailing the form and it's going to all different people without ever this going to the hiring manager. manager. No, it goes to the hi this form, because this isn't the real form. Not this form, but oh. the form about banner access. No, that access. does not. But I guess what we're going to have to do, because I'm, I can't chase a bunch of forms, but what I can do is under that hiring manager section um, have make it bigger so that you can write in what the individual needs for banner and then I can add it to the form. It's not even banner. So like the banner whatever it is covered is yep. definitely more of the IT. Like there's an IT piece. Yep. So what I'll do is I'll make that space <laughs> larger and um, when that comes to the hiring manager, whoever it goes to, you can just fill in all the things that that person should have and I will take care of that on the forms for Tim Dubuque. Okay, okay so I'll, I'll initiate that process. Okay. So do we feel good about this for right this minute? I don't know. Oh, after you. Okay. Cindy? Yeah, so is this, this is not used for agents? That's not used not for agents. All right, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Um, so some of the pieces, but I don't, I don't know if this is a this way question or what. So for instance, the IT access form that adjuncts fill out is not the same one that full-time faculty fill out. It is the same it one. Is the same one. So should I be noting or someone be noting like where I need my adjuncts added to? Academic Affairs automatically adds them to um, the places in Canvas that they need access to. But there's no way to automate, for instance, adding them to my department page when they get created. Because the, so the issue that I run into is not unless we had the capability to do that. We have to actually be leaders in Canvas in order to put them in your site. So we can't do that. That's something that you would have to do. Because the issue I run into, and you and I have gone back and forth about this already, is when adjuncts' emails are created. I don't know when they're done, which means I can't add them and I can't search for them because I don't know what they're named in there because it's no longer always sufficient to assume first initial, last name. Mm -hmm. So is there <coughs> collective people, is there a way to, I don't know, other than Mike emailing Karen, Karen emailing me because I feel like that's probably going to be the answer. Back but from Mike, I can email you when I get them. That just doesn't seem. Because then I put them in the mail to the adjunct. It seems rude to have to make Karen email me every time I onboard a new adjunct. You haven't been able to search because I just search for them. No, it find. doesn't let me search because um, the names don't match appropriately all of the time because of. Are you hiring a bunch of Josephs? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They're all named Josephs. I've had a few cases where they have to put the legal name into the banner, and so I hired them under the name that they told me was their name, but their legal name is different. Their alias is different. Their yeah. alias is different, right? Do you have a lot? Um, no, seriously, do you have a lot of those? Because usually you go right into the two button on email, mm -hmm. and you start to type in the person's full name, right? it'll come up. There was one, because I've got one who, she goes by Mika, but her legal name is Mimi, which I did not know until it showed up when I was searching her in Banner, no, SIS for her courses, and I thought it was a mistake, Yeah. because uh, we do now also have a Mimi. Mm -hmm. um, so that, <laughs> some of this is, like, by the time they fill out the paperwork with Karen, I'm out of the loop at that point, and I don't see their hiring paperwork. Yep. So I don't actually know what email they were signed. Um, and I don't necessarily want the answer to be, and Karen emails me more. Mm -hmm. You have other things to do other yeah. than email me. I'm going to let Academic Affairs answer that. I don't, <laughs> That's nice. no, and you don't have to answer it today, yeah. I mean, but you can talk about it. Like, but just. Like, I mean, I could do, because we have a spreadsheet of every single new hire and every single step that we take with a new hire. Once I have all of your, their emails for the semester, I can send that to you if that's helpful. And then it's not. I just feel like it's putting a lot of work onto you to have to remember to do these pieces. It's just, it's just well, someone has to do it, right? I mean, it's. I'd like to make IT do it because they're the ones that are making my life harder. <laughs> yeah, but they 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 just give Karen like the envelope with the. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's a very official process. Right. Um, if he gives me the email address, I go back in the banner. I put it in banner so yeah. they get Canvas. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's but, not done. I mean, there's nothing IT. done by IT or the banner coordinator for yeah. Adams. That's all handled in academic affairs. Wow. And so I want to say for this group and for the camera, I do not get involved in adjunct <coughs> hiring. Mm -hmm. This is, a, I did at River Except Valley, but for clear some, company. at this yeah. campus we don't, HR does not do adjunct hiring, and Karen is like amazing. So yes, she is. That's why that's on camera. Right. Karen, <laughs> Karen <laughs> is it's amazing. official now. I, 
before we move on, um, and maybe you said yeah, that when I just didn't hear it, but um, them being added to the RAVE alert system, is that on here or is that? It's like not identified exactly on here, but um, I will, um, at least I don't, that word is not there, so I will follow up on that. Did you say something about the emergency system? For the term. I said and I think that's probably what it is. Um, add to alarm company, enable email, add to distribution list. Um, right. Activate ID cards, phone, and computer access. Well, so I didn't say anything on my TV. Yeah, I think it was just somewhere else. Yes. Um, so. And then the other thing is, um, and maybe it is on there, and again, I didn't hear it, but um, there's a couple issues with the website. There's like, they get added to the college's webpage in general, but then some of us have department websites. So if you're editing this, if that could be under the hiring manager, that we might need to add them as staff under our web page and or Canvas page. Um, and I, I, I'm i assuming that HR, I mean not HR, that IT is adding them to the college's web page. Yep. Okay. So I'll add that one, but what did you say add them under Canvas and what was the other? The department web pages. Okay. So I'll, I'll um, enhance this list. And yeah. and it's like if, if applicable, right? Yeah. If not everybody yeah. has. Yeah. 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 Okay, good. Can I just have one question about the you raise? Anything. That's a good consideration, Becky, but isn't that a voluntary thing that people choose or not choose? Right, but if they're not told about it when they're onboarding, then when are they told about it? Okay, so let me just back that up yeah. for a second. So um, when the paperwork is done, the new hire paper, paperwork, I'm sitting with them and going through everything, they're given a handout, a rave handout. Okay, so it is so that they, So it is, but it's not on this list yeah. because I just handled that. So I was sorry. thinking. I was sorry. thinking you were talking about us signing them up for. No, I just wanted to make sure that that wasn't overlooked. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. That also no. goes out with their IT information. They get how to sign up for rave, and they get the email that Mike put together, or the pamphlet that Mike put together. Is it a legitimate email or not? Mm -hmm. They've actually they get that at least in hand once, and then with adjuncts. Not only do they get it in hand, but they then email it to them with oh, their great. helpful information. So, and they're getting it from HR except for the address on your end. So and they're getting it over and over again. So, all right. So the next slide, we'll talk about um, onboarding external, externally candidate information, coming next, clear company onboarding. Although I, I, I gave you that information at the beginning, I went out of order. Um, so just hang on one second. Let's see if I have any other notes about that that I might not have talked about. Um, so the candidate is sent, oh, so this is what will happen through Clear Company. The candidate will be sent <coughs> links and materials pertaining to employee information prior to arriving on campus. CCS and HR group is working on this. Um, and I think we bought whatever the product is that Clear Company has. We're just trying to work out the kinks. And there are sample, there are template forms that everybody uses, like the W4 and the I9. So those are the easy peasy ones. and they're trying to figure out what else is specific to CCS and H that needs to be uploaded. So, so we've done all of these things. That sheet, that checklist has gone out to everybody. Uh, it's been signed off on. My assumption after it's been signed off on is that it's actually happened. And then the employee, dun da da. Right? You like that? So yeah. come up with a few surprises every now and then. <laughs> Oh, and that's a really nice picture, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Can I just mention something before you get off of the Clear Company thing? Mm. It's one thing that I didn't know was in there, and yeah. you you um, so gently pointed me in that direction. Um, <laughs> is if you're if you're choosing like if you're interviewing people and then you're they're not your top candidates and stuff. There's pull down boxes that have template letters. And so you don't have to create all of the email of so sorry that you weren't. Yeah. So, I but can I just that. caution? Yeah. I let me do that, if that's okay. I, it's I, there. I would, I would love you to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is there. That would be super fantastic. Yeah, it's accessible for hiring managers. Okay. But I would just prefer. Um, I guess what I want to say is I don't want candidates hounding hiring managers. Yeah. If a candidate's unhappy with the response that they get, yeah. I want them to come to, to tell me. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you'll get calls from yes. everywhere. Yes. So that's why I kind of keep control of that yes. piece. But yeah, thanks for pointing it out. Yeah, don't it's... touch it. Don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you told me to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all good. Those who aren't selected do hear. 
hear back. They do. Okay. Everybody hears back one way or another. Yep. And actually, I'm going to go back to that for a second, Lisa, mm -hmm. because I think what you're referring to when you're certifying full time faculty, mm -hmm. you're doing the drop down menu. Um, to certify them as assistant, associate, or professor. Is that what you're talking about? No, talking I was about talking about the letter template. Yeah. Okay. Like the one that I said saying, thanks so much, this is an open position. Please don't harass me. Yeah, and you can do that because I don't get involved with right. adjuncts right. at all, again. You're, you're talking about decision making uh, for full-time yes. um, staff or faculty. Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so they arrived. So, um, here are some things. Feeling welcome and housekeeping. Um, as well as acclimating to the campus, meeting new people, and socialization. So the safety desk is informed of the employee's arrival their first day, so the initial welcome takes place at the front desk. And if you've ever watched Steve Dockery um, welcome somebody to the campus, it's pretty awesome. Like, it's, I, I just think he is the epitome of um, a, a good first impression. Doesn't Dan work Fridays, though? So maybe we need to switch that up. <laughs> Dan's awesome, Dan's too. great. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I spend the first hour with the employee talking about the campus, about ccs and and last-minute paperwork. Um, normally, and I'm just going to say it that way because I think I have forgotten maybe a couple of times, um, I have cards in my office that are welcome cards. And what I'm trying to do is make sure the hiring manager gets that welcome card so that the department can sign it and just have that on the person's desk their first day of work. So um, uh, so I try really hard, and maybe I'll add it to my checklist so I make sure that I do it. Um, but I just think it's a nice little touch. Um, and then, so the next is we have two staff members, Karen Burns and Laurie Merrick, who um, become sort of like buddies to the new staff, and they provide a binder of useful information. They take the individual on a tour to introduce them and to explain what each department does. And then they invite the employee to lunch. Um, I think you guys have invited employees to lunch a few times, right? So we have, so how awesome is that? You walk into a place where you don't know anybody. You have two employees assigned to you. The binder, um, I'm gonna send you what Karen gave me. So um, the binder is actually up to the hiring manager to go put ahead. together. Yep. I'll put together one for our new assistant. Um, and she found it very helpful. Yep. And it was customized for academic affairs. So I gave you a generalized list that other departments can do for people. Yep. And then put directions on all the specific things their department yep. does. So thank you for that because um, actually, I'm sorry, I sort of um, said something I shouldn't have. <laughs> so actually, in my department, um, I have a work study student who has the information for the binders. So we'll be giving the binders and then hiring managers and I'll add that to that section too, can add in specific department information. So you come in, you have, a, you have a welcome card, you have a binder, you have two great employees walking you around the campus. Um, you know, maybe you're having a cup of coffee, you're learning about the culture of the institution. So there's all kinds of great things going on there. Um, so can I just clarify, are Karen and Lori doing it for all new employees? Because they're doing it for new staff. Right now they're doing it for new staff. Okay. Yep. So, um, and it's relatively new. They did it for the last seven people that were hired in. Yes. Um, so we haven't had any other like new hires. We had <laughs> internal people move from position to position. Yeah. But um, so going forward, it will still be the same with staff. Um, for faculty, yes. I know we have a department share onboarding process with mm -hmm. Dulcinea, but I will put this out there. It would be really awesome if I had faculty buddies to do the same thing with the new faculty yeah. and take them around and do the same exact thing. Acclimate them to the community. Um, give them, you know, we'll give them a binder. Academic Affairs can make it specific, like Karen said, and just really spend time with an individual, um, helping them to understand what, what we do mm -hmm. and, and how the departments interrelate. Um, so part of the process that for the first day is the employee gets their ID from IT. Um, IT usually makes a visit to the employee. I know they give them a letter, but sometimes they'll make the visit <coughs> to the employee when they're trying to get into the computer. Just a little personal touch. Um, the employee attends and completes various new hire trainings. Um, the employee is invited to lunch with the president. That's new. Um, we did that. Um, actually, Palama agreed to do that. Um, prior to his departure, and he was all on board with having the seven new hires have lunch with him. 
um, which just surprised me because he's in, he was you know he's an introvert and I just didn't think that was his thing. And thankfully, Catherine just agreed to do it in his place. Um, and I think she said it really was very successful. So um, the employee is invited to sit on various committees, and they're HR committees that I invite them to sit on because it's not my place to invite them to other ones. But I tell them if they're interested that they should share that interest with their hiring manager so they're put in the appropriate places. Um, the, the employee receives a follow-up document reminding them of some important elements um, to remember, and that can be pick up your paycheck at the one stop, you know, on the pay dates, they get a pay date list, um, go to the lunchroom and eat lunch, meet some new people, stop by and chat with somebody you haven't met before just to kind of get the feel <coughs> of the place and get the feel of the people. So there's a little colorful uh, sheet that I send to people um, probably about a week after they start. And um, then I do a regular check-in or stop-by. So, you know, three, four weeks in, poor Amy Winslow Weiss, I think, because I was up in the sec back and forth on the second floor. I was like poking my head in what seemed like every other day. Uh, but she was very kind about it. But I just wanted to make sure, because she's kind of isolated in that spot. So I like to just check in, make sure people are feeling comfortable, you know, ask them if they have any questions or anything like that. Um, and actually, this is the sheet that I send out that you can't see, but you'll see it when I send you the PowerPoint. And it goes through the things, the helpful hints to a new hire. So um, they get that about a week later. And then, what else do we do? Uh, oh yeah, so we introduce the new hire at all college when, when I do that presentation. And, uh, let's see. And then we have a reverse uh, process for offboarding. So um, this sheet, if somebody's leaving, um, this sheet goes to the hiring manager, academic affairs, HR, marketing, banner coordinator, and facilities. And it's basically to reverse everything we did during the onboarding process um, to make sure we collect keys, to make sure I meet with the individuals. Um, you know, talk to them about last minute things. I send an exit interview form to our employees that are leaving, but there's no obligation for them to fill it out. They can fill it out because it's good information for us to have. A lot of times people don't want to do that because they're afraid, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that it might harm them in some way. So um, the offboarding process is pretty robust, I think. Um, and uh, it just makes sure that we have all our, all our ducks in a row so we're, you know, uh, shutting off any um, uh, any access that people have. And I will say, when somebody's leaving, we shut their access off completely at four o'clock that afternoon. And that seems, it feels harsh to me, but that's what we do. We just shut off access at four o'clock like you never existed. And the reality of it is, I think we've learned the hard way that if you don't do that and somebody's disgruntled, you just don't know what they might want to do. So we just take the cautious approach and just shut everything down. And if there's anything you want to talk about again, uh, questions or... Thank you for doing this. Oh, for absolutely. Presentation, but also for taking the time to pull all this together. Oh my goodness, I'm happy, yeah. So when you, okay, let me just ask one, I'm going to ask you a favor. When you get the documents from me, I really want you to read them. And I really want your suggestions because this process is only as good as everybody helps me make it. I can't make all the decisions myself because I don't know what you need or what you want. So I would really just ask you to be honest with me. You're not going to hurt my feelings. It takes an awful lot to hurt my feelings. Um, so I would just ask you to please uh, give me your feedback. Lisa? No, I, again, thank you for this because none of this existed in any shape yeah, or form before <laughs> Diane. So this, yeah. this was between, you know, what the work that you've been doing, yeah. Diane, the work that Karen's been doing as far as adjuncts. Um, it, yeah. it, it really has has really made the process so much nicer. I'm um, really glad because it's, it's very hard. We all know when you walk on a campus, <laughs> right? Uh, and you don't know anybody and you're just like, you don't know where you fit. You want to go eat in the lunchroom, but you feel like a loser because you're sitting by yourself. <laughs> you, you know, I mean, really, you do. You just not for you shouldn't, but you do. You just feel very awkward, and um, I just feel like I, I, people need to know who we are and what we have to offer, and that they made the right decision. 
So but I appreciate the thought that you've put in, even with the offboarding, because Fran Chickering still teaches in my department, mm -hmm. and I regularly mess up which email I'm supposed to email her yeah. to. So um, it's very helpful to get the, no, you have sent this to an email that I'm no longer here. Yeah. You should be emailing Sarah Follins. Uh, yeah, okay, wrong one. Yeah. Um, so even things like that are, are yeah. really helpful. And it's the very basic things. Those are the things that we usually miss, and then it's right. like, are you kidding me? We look like, you know, we look like fools because we didn't figure that out. And so. I love the checklist. So we'll yeah. Oh, so um, let me give credit where credit's due. When I first walked in the door February of 2018, um, Mike McNeil, one of the first things he hit me with was, or actually Ashley, Mike, Mike has checklists. Mike has onboarding checklists. And he's been trying to get this um, together for the longest time. And um, he just really needs help so that we can get all this, the, these processes in place. And then Karen and I um, kind of rolled with it, Karen mostly, rolled with it and just didn't even wait for Mike anymore. He gave us the template and we just ran with it. Mm -hmm. So, and now you have, you know, uh, an onboarding and offboarding. She's got adjunct stuff. And we're just like rocking and rolling. I just feel really good because I feel like it's a team effort. I feel like when HR is in isolation, um, you know, I can do what I think is right, but I don't know. What do I know? So you know a lot. I don't she know does much. know a lot. Sure, thank you. Can you talk a little bit about what people are seeing on the risk management website? So the only thing people are getting, so the risk management website USI um, is not as good a product as we thought it was. So the only thing that people are getting, and sometimes repeatedly, is the driver <laughs> safety training. Every single week. I get it every week, too. I, I get that. When you the, said that, I felt really good. I was like, all right, it's not I don't know how to make it stop. Problem. I've asked for it to stop, and <laughs> nobody can help me. That's right, so, I still can't log in. So I get, so. Oh my so god, OK. So, so USI was a really bad product, but it was free. So we went with it, right? Because that's what we do. <laughs> yeah, that and so yeah. Because, yeah, because we have to do driver safety training, that one seems like it's OK. Okay, so we're really only using that risk management site for driver safety. Um, I'm hoping, well, there's conversation at system office that we're going to be hiring a trainer, and that trainer's responsibility, part of their responsibility, is to put a risk management profile together for all of the recommended trainings that employees are supposed to have, depending on what position they're in. So if I'm not retired by the time that happens, <laughs> then uh, you'll get it and we'll make it work. No, I'm just saying because things take forever. Mm -hmm. Forever. So um, hopefully that so will. So we get it forever. Yeah. So hopefully that will um, take place and we'll be able to use a more robust um, process for trainings. But right now it's driver safety. And for those of you who get it every Sunday, I apologize. <laughs> I could make that I was doing something wrong. No, no. Finally, it's, yeah. it's just a reminder to drive safe to that. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, you're on your own. Yes. Week. And we were supposed to do the anti-harassment anti training on the USI site. But I don't know. Like, it became a disaster. So then they um, decided we should do the PowerPoint. So you know how you all mm -hmm. have been doing the PowerPoint and the quiz and the so we just need some better products. I forget what question that was. Anything else I can help you with? Wow, 10 seconds. Well, if you have questions, you know where I am. Email me. I'm going to send you stuff. You're going to write back to me and tell me what else you want on these lists. You're going to tell me how I can help you, because I don't know how I can help you unless you tell me. And. Um, and if there are any faculty in the recording, if there are anybody, if there's anybody that wants to be an ambassador or a buddy to a new faculty, I would love to have your names. Because that's Thank actually you. a good process. Because um, we, this was the first time I, I was sort of like Amy's buddy when she came on. And I'm the one that brought her around and did everything. But yeah. with um, with Eric coming on, I um, had him with a. Department chair mentor. Yes, and, and that um, perfectly, right? And the office was open right next to her, yep. so it worked out like perfectly. But right. um, he he said that's been really helpful to Good. him. So I think if we can get faculty yep. um, involved in that process, it's not a t lot of time. It's not you know, right. it, but it's invaluable to the new right. And maybe we can get it underway before January, before the business faculty person starts, and yep. then we'll have something that we can provide mm -hmm. that you know that individual with to help acclimate them to the culture and how we operate. Nobody's ever going to really understand how we operate because it's a little, I think we're so unique. I 
feel like CCSNH is unique in a lot of ways. Um, so, but whatever help we can provide for new people is great. Sign in before you go because you'll be entered into a raffle. <coughs> the next training is November 20th. Is that right, Sharon? And how do you shut this off? Yes, November 20th. Is there a stop button? There's a red button on top. I act like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I have a clip. Okay. Do you know which one it is? The red button? Up higher, I think. Up higher? Oh, yep. Up higher.